this has been one of the funniest news weeks I can remember in a really, really long time. And a lot of heavy stuff has happened, but a lot of really fun stuff has happened too. And so I'm going to give you some of the fun, and I'm just going to rapid fire these. We're going to do this instead of the Daily Dose of Stupid. We're just going to rapid fire these, but man, this has been a really funny, funny week. And I'm going to give you two, we're going to, to start out at number seven and we're going to lead up to what I think is the funniest story of the week. So this first one, it, it comes via Planned Parenthood who tweets this out. And I don't really even have to give much commentary on this. The tweet just speaks for itself. I love that the best thing about following Planned Parenthood's Twitter because, of course, you get the social justice warrior crap and you, you get all the other stuff. But the best thing about it is they have no self-awareness at all. Like, they they do not have an ounce of self-awareness. And they just, sometimes like this, tweet out things that are a complete contradiction to everything that Planned Parenthood stands for. And they don't even realize it. So here's a tweet from them earlier. Planned Parenthood action. Human rights for all, no exceptions. <laughs> Hashtag human rights day. And I know that this is very dark to be laughing at something like this, because, I mean, it is an organization that is a more effective genocidal murderer than Adolf Hitler. So I get that it's coming from a dark place, but, I mean, come on. The fact that they just have zero self-awareness whatsoever you got to kind of laugh at it to keep from crying just because the, the, all no exceptions, all human rights, human rights for all. All right. This next one, California passes the crown act. Now you might be sitting there thinking, why would they pass a crown act? We actually have a provision in our constitution that prevents any form of royalty. No, that's not the crown that they're talking about. Uh, this Crown Act apparently makes it illegal to discriminate against black people for wearing their natural hairstyle. Now, I've never known this to be a thing, and one of the reasons this is such an amusing article is that the woman that they use as their big example, because you know these stories, and, and I'm not bashing the, the way that they do this, because it's actually a smart way to run the story. They always try to find a, a victim of the injustice before the bill or law was signed in to, to give you sort of an idea of why this bill was necessary. With this one, they chose a lady uh, that has her hair every day in dreadlocks, and her employer discriminated against her uh, for wearing dreadlocks, and I was sitting there like, dreadlocks aren't natural. You have to, actually, it's a very extensive process to do dreadlocks. <laughs> Your employer has the right to dictate your appearance to a certain degree. I'm a perfect example of that. I specifically cultivate a look, and I know that this surprises people because they're looking at it like, Caleb, you really, you focus on your looks? No, I actually do <laughs> because it's important. I mean, like right now I'm wearing my woman of the year shirt. See, I mean... I, I all when you if you started out watching this program, you know that I would wear uh, just superhero shirts or whatever. My boss actually came to me. He's like, "Look, you need to either look professional or you need to wear some t-shirts that are, are political in nature and, and make some kind of joke or something like that." So you may have noticed if you look through my more recent videos, I'm either wearing a button-down shirt or I'm wearing a t-shirt that has some kind of political message on it or something like that, which is fine. I don't mind that. But you can't tell me that just, you know, wearing some kind of crazy hairstyle that is obviously unprofessional, that that just needs to be protected against all of it. But I just find it hilarious that, that they're doing this. I mean, come on, like I'm whiter than sour cream and I've had to change my hair uh, styles or my, my beard for work. That's just, that's how it is. This is a really good one. Megan Fox, you may remember her from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies, if you're one of the three people that saw those movies, or if you've seen her from Transformers, uh, the early ones, which people actually did watch. You'll remember Megan Fox as the actress in that. Very attractive lady. Not sure that she's a great actress, but, you know, she's, she's good looking enough. It doesn't really matter all that much, to be perfectly honest. Uh, she's also a new girl. Yeah, that, that's a good show. She's a side character in New Girl. Uh, Megan Fox says that her kids go to vegan school. 
And this is via a magazine article from People where they did an interview with her. And this is what Megan said about it. I'm very specific about never harming animals. We don't step on ants. We don't do things like that. We don't rip flowers out of the ground because we think they're beautiful. I teach them that plants are sentient beings, <laughs> that they have thoughts and emotions. So that's what we're doing. Uh, granted, I'm not an expert on veganism, but I thought the whole reason that people were vegans is because they believed that animals felt pain and had emotions and were sentient. And because of that, they didn't eat animals because they saw that that would be the same as eating a human. Uh, granted, maybe there's different reasons that people are vegan other than that, but I, I always thought that that was kind of the reason that you go vegan is because you don't ever want to bring harm to an animal because they can feel pain and they have emotions and all these other things. But if you're saying that and you're also saying that plants have emotions and are sentient, which is what Megan just said, if plants have feelings and thoughts and emotions, which is, of course, scientifically impossible, they don't have a nervous system. But if plants do that, then isn't eating plants wrong, too? There seems to be a, a fairly obvious contradiction in your philosophy there, Megan Fox. <laughs> I mean, if plants are sentient and have emotions and feelings and it's wrong to hurt them or it's wrong to, as you say, rip a flower out of the ground, then wouldn't it be wrong to eat a plant too? <laughs> like, I guess maybe that's how Megan Fox stays so darn skinny. She doesn't eat meat and she doesn't eat plants. I, I guess Megan Fox just doesn't eat. That would explain why she looks so good. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, man. Uh, this is another quote by her from that same People article. My son accidentally stepped on a roly-poly once, and he was devastated. And we had a funeral for it. We did a ceremony. We buried it. We, we lit sage, and we released him back. <laughs> so does she have a... Does she have a funeral for all the plant she eats? Because they're sentient and have feelings, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just... Megan Fox tickles me so much. Uh, another one, and you'd be surprised how low this one is on the list because it's, it's number four. But I promise, there are stories even funnier than this one. Time names Greta Thunberg the 2019 person of the year. And... Uh, <laughs> How dare you? Uh, the person of the year isn't necessarily somebody that is virtuous or good. So even if it's somebody you don't like, you can understand why somebody is person of the year. Barack Obama was person of the year. He's somebody that I politically disagree with a lot. There is no question he should have been person of the year. Like the first black president, the way that he came in and basically with virtually no experience, just handed Hillary Clinton's hat to her and it wasn't even much of a contest. Like, that's a significant event in American history. Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, they've both been people of the year before. It's not necessarily an honor we're saying, hey, this person is the best. You can be person of the year and not necessarily be a good person. So if she were a climate change activist that was really significant to the world this year, I could kind of see it, but she wasn't. Like Greta Thunberg was in the news for two, maybe three days. And then just kind of went away, and she made a, a circle around the wagons one last time when she got lost, because she doesn't ride on airplanes, and uh, they're treating her as though she's this righteous climate warrior. She rode on a, a multi-million dollar yacht to get to South America for the climate change thing. What, what a sacrifice that was. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Uh, she was in the news for maybe a grand total of a week out of the entire year. And she's person of the year? Really? I could have seen a lot of different people, whether I agree with them politically or not, being person of the year. The impeachment proceeding, I think, would have justified either Adam Schiff or we could even go with the Mueller report, Robert Mueller. I mean, how how many weeks did we spend talking about Robert Mueller? I could easily see him being person of the year. Here's another thing. If you want to talk, if you want to 
Time Magazine to have a young person that makes a difference in the world, why not the young people in Hong Kong? And by the way, the person of the year can be a group that has been before. The American soldier was person of the year one year, for example. Why not the people in Hong Kong right now that are fighting for their liberty against an incredibly oppressive government? Why not those people? Uh, they're not deserving of it, but Greta, uh, you know, Greta Thunberg, who has been in the news a grand total of a week this entire year and just made an impassioned yet delusional speech with no facts in it to the UN. She's deserving a person of the year, really? It just, it doesn't make any sense. So speaking of people I disagree with, this is another good one. Megan Rapinoe. Megan Rapinoe, you may remember, she was in the news this year. Heck, Megan Rapinoe is more deserving a person of the year than Greta, Greta Thunberg. But anyway... Uh, Megan Rapinoe was the female soccer player that made headlines and was in the news for months on end about how women soccer players don't get paid as much as men, which is, you know, makes sense because they bring in significantly less than the men. But anyway, uh, she was named spokesperson, uh, sports person of the year by uh, Sports Illustrated. And what's hysterical is she got on stage and immediately started bashing Sports Illustrated for their lack of diversity. She said, uh, and this is a quote, Is it truth that I am the only the fourth woman deserving of this award? I don't think so. Is it true so few writers of color deserve to be featured in this publication? No. But here's the thing. I feel no sympathy for Sports Illustrated at all. And here's why. If you give the award to a frog, you can't be mad at the frog for croaking. I mean, this is Megan Rapinoe. This is what she does. She kicks a ball, and she gripes about how women are underpaid. Like, that's the only two things she is humanly capable of doing. And you're really shocked when you bring her on stage and she talks about how terrible you are. This is what the woman does. Uh, to you go back to my frog analogy that that comes from an old proverb, like the frog gives a ride to the scorpion across a pond. And then the scorpion says, if you give me a ride, I won't sting you. And then of course they get to the other side of the pond, pond and the first thing the scorpion does is sting them. And the frog says, but you said you wouldn't sting me. He goes, I'm a scorpion. It's in my nature. That's what Megan Rapinoe is. She doesn't know how to not do this. And so sports illustrated, you get what you deserve. But I will say this too, this is an important lesson for people like Chick-fil-A who cave to the rainbow jihad, who cave to the social justice warriors and think that they can appease them. You're never going to appease them. It doesn't matter what you do. They are constantly searching for things to be offended about. You cannot satisfy a person like that. I don't know how many times I have to say it. You can not satisfy a person like that. They will always be angry. They will always blame you. They're never going to be grateful. They're never going to be glad that you capitulate. In their own head, you were supposed to bow down and kiss their ring to begin with. And for the very sin of not doing that immediately, they're just never going to accept you. It is hilarious how the, the movement that's supposed to be all about tolerance and acceptance will never accept anybody, even when the person converts to their side. <laughs> this brings me to number two. And uh, this one is really good. So the Trump campaign put out a meme that drove the left nuts, and then the left reacted by going nuts. So here is CNN's Don Lemon. In addition to all the lies and all the blustering at tonight's rally, Trump's war room posted a meme on Twitter today showing Trump as the supervillain Thanos from the Marvel Avengers movies. Dispatching his Democratic en enemies. Take a look at this. I am inevitable. On this solemn day, I'm, I recall that the first order of business for members of... What what are we in junior high school? Like, what the hell? Is, what is this? You broke Don Lemon. Like, what? What? <laughs> I, I, 
cannot believe that I'm even having to report this on the news. I can't believe you're still on the news. This is cr- this is crazy. <laughs> this is literally crazy. Are you people insane? Are you are you insane? Go ahead. Troll the Democrats on Twitter. Do this stupid, silly, you know what? <laughs> Play this stupid, juvenile, meme game. History won't record this meme, stupid crap. No, it might. But history will record this, the seriousness of what is happening. That today is the day that the House of Representatives in the United States of America introduced articles of impeachment against President Donald J. Trump, the President of the United States of America, for committing high crimes and misdemeanors. There have been very few stories I enjoyed doing more than this one. And I'm about to tick off both sides. I know it's my thing. It's what I do. I'm about to tick off both sides when it comes to the story. Because first of all, Don Lemon, though his reaction is stupid, he is making a point that is not completely without merit. Politically, it is incredibly stupid to paint yourself as the most notorious mass murderer in American pop culture, with the possible exception of Dark Side. And the reason... Look, I I like Marvel more than DC as a general rule, even though I do really love Superman. But Darkseid wants to eliminate the entire universe with the anti-life equation. Thanos wants to kill half of it. So by definition, Darkseid is the bigger bad than Thanos. So Thanos wants to murder literally half the entire universe, and Trump's team thought it was a good idea to put Trump's face over Thanos and him saying, I'm inevitable, snapping his finger, and the Democrats get dusted. Now, that's a really, really stupid move. Now, is the meme funny? Yeah, it actually is kind of funny. But it's still not politically a smart move to do. And I would be a little bit more forgiving of that if this were not a movie where literally not even a whole second after that clip that they just took of Thanos snapping his fingers and having Trump's face over it, if there were not two seconds later, another character who is the hero of that movie, who is a billionaire, (laughs) like they couldn't, they couldn't have made a better scenario for president Trump than putting his face over Iron Man and having him say, Well, I'm Iron Man. And then all the bad guys go away because that happens literally a second later in that movie. Why not use that? Because Tony Stark, a billionaire that leads a hedonistic lifestyle until he's actually faced some responsibility and then makes all the bad guys go away. Donald Trump a billionaire who spends most of his life living a hedonistic lifestyle until he has some responsibility that he takes up and is now fighting the Democrats. Like there's a pretty strong parallel there. And I don't know why, (laughs) why on earth would you put your face in front of Thanos when you actually correlate much more strongly to Iron Man I mean, the guy who's kind of arrogant, he's a narcissist, he's kind of a jerk to people, but he is fighting for the right side and winds up, though he's a billionaire, (laughs) I mean, the parallels are staggering. And they don't, uh, like, do I have to do everything for you people? Do you want me to just come down there and be in charge of memes? Like, is that really what we've come to? This is not that hard, y'all. All All right, now the other side of that. Even though the meme is definitely flawed, and I just pointed out all those flaws, 
Don Lemon's overreaction to it is just the best. He, I mean, they broke Don Lemon. Don Lemon doesn't know what to say. <laughs> He's like, I, I, but, I, I, are you in high school? How, how dare you? It, it proves two things. First of all, it proves that Don Lemon has absolutely no knowledge about the Marvel universe. Like he's, he watching him try to describe it. He's like the, uh, the, the villain of the Marvel's Avengers movie. Like you can tell the guy doesn't know anything. He's not tuned into to pop culture. He's not a comics fan. He, he doesn't know the stuff that the average everyday American works but because the guy works in a, in an ivory tower and just like the people at Time Magazine, he's so entrenched in that little media bubble and doesn't speak to the the unwashed masses, the peasants out there in flyover country to know what movies are popular that he can't even name the villain of the most profitable movie of all time. <laughs> so, first of all, Don Lemon just proves that he knows absolutely nothing about Marvel Comics or really American culture in general. The second part of that, because it does show what a pompous jerk he is. The second part of that is that Don Lemon really proves himself as the snide, unlikable jerk that has not an ounce of... I mean, if you were to do an MRI to find Don Lemon's sense of humor, believe me, it'd come up empty no matter how advanced the MRI is. I know MRIs can't find senses of humor. That's the joke, and Don Lemon wouldn't have gotten it. So... <laughs> Don Lemon just does not have a sense of humor because the meme is still funny. The, very flawed, but it's still pretty funny. And then, finally, the funniest story of the week. Pigeons. That's right, pigeons. Pigeons in Las Vegas are now wearing cowboy hats. And I know this sounds like something that Caleb made up, but I promise this is a real thing. You can check it out here. Pigeons wearing cowboy hats. There we go. So in Las Vegas, people just started noticing that there are pigeons wandering around with tiny cowboy hats on. <laughs> there are so many questions I have about the cowboy pigeons. Um, why? How? Who? Whose idea was this? What purpose does it serve? Are there going to be cowboy pigeons in other cities? Like, but we don't really know that because we don't know who is putting the cowboy hats on the pigeons. But there is a pigeon rescue. Yes, these things apparently actually exist. There is a pigeon rescue group called Lofty Hopes. And they say that the hats were glued on. So CNN got a quote from Lofty Hopes the Pigeon Rescue Association. I really had no idea this was a thing. The rescue group put on traps to try to nab the birds, dubbed Chuck Norris in the red hat and Calamity Jane in the pink lit. Okay, so even even Lofty Hopes is having some fun with this. They, they've tried to catch the birds so that they can remove the, the hat so that the birds, you know, aren't hurt or whatever. But, I, I mean, oh... I read that wrong. I'm sorry. Cluck Norris and Coolamity Jane. You get it? So even the pigeon rights group that are trying, <laughs> that are upset about this, even they're having some fun with it. And that's what should happen. Uh, I don't want any harm to come to the birds per se. I mean, it's a pigeon, so it's, you know, not like a, a dog or something, but still, you know, I, there's no reason to needlessly harm an animal. But you have to admit, the thing is pretty amusing. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. And if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.